again, Peabody here. Sherman and I are on our way into the past, as usual, and today's journey should be an exciting one. What shall I set the way back for, Mr. Peabody? Date-wise, Sherman, set it for July 14th, 1865. And the place? A steep peak in the Alps, 14,780 feet high. It is called the Matterhorn, and we shall be there when it is conquered by Lord Francis Douglas. It was a short journey, and a cold one. Before we could catch our breath, we were standing with Lord Douglas and his party in the town of Zermatt. Towering over us was the mighty Matterhorn. Oh, this infernal delay has worn my nerves to a frazzle. Are you ready to make your ascent, Lord Douglas? Have been, you know, since three this morning. Why are you waiting? Because no one has said go. You mean you and your men have been standing here all that time waiting for somebody to say go? Yes, I suppose that does sound a trifle odd to you. Sherman, do Lord Douglas a favor and say go. I'd be glad to, Mr. Peabody. <clears throat> go. Underway at last, the Douglas party lost no time in climbing. We followed their progress with a spyglass and were startled five minutes later to see they were already halfway up. That must be some kind of record. Yes, it would be, if it were Lord Douglas. Huh? Look again, Sherman. You'll see that Lord Douglas is in a race for those climbers halfway up for a party made up of Italians. How can you be sure? Look closely, my boy, and you'll see... I don't see anything different about them except their snowshoes. That's it, Sherman. Those snowshoes are pizzas. Suddenly the door of our chalet burst open and in stumbled one of Lord Douglas's guides. Lord Douglas is doomed! Before he could elaborate, the guide collapsed. What do you suppose he meant, Mr. Peabody? Only one way to find out, Sherman. We must scale the Matterhorn ourselves. Well, the climb was a simple one for Sherman and me, due to the fact that we lived in my penthouse apartment, you know. And for exercise, we would scorn the use of the elevator every so often and use the stairs. Well, we reached Lord Douglas's camp in no time at all. And I say we turn back. But you can't let the Italians beat us, old boy. It isn't the Italians, old man. It's the... It's what, Lord Douglas? The abdominal snowman. The who? A creature who inhabits snow-covered mountains, Sherman, and throws snowballs at people. My words were followed by a bombardment of the aforementioned objects. How the devil can I conquer the Matterhorn with a snowball in my face? Sherman, being all boy and a yard wide, was all for sending up a bombardment of his own. I had other ideas, though, and set the party to constructing three snowmen of our own. This sure is fun! Mr. Peabody. And a half hour later, we were rid of the abdominal snowman and free to resume the climb. For under my direction, we had erected a bridge game consisting of three snowmen, a table, a pack of cards, and four chairs. It wasn't long before our attacker joined the game. And if I knew bridge, this game would last a long time. By George, that was positively wizard. Onward! The ascent continued, and although no one voiced it out loud, each man harbored a fear the Italians would reach the summit first. Unfortunately, as we rounded a bend, we found the Italians had run into bad luck and were quitting. It's all his fault, the Luigi here. I'm a tell him once, I'm a tell him a thousand times. Last a hundred feet to the top, you gotta climb with rope. What does he bring? A spaghetti. And the meatballs. We'd give you some of our rope, old boy, but we don't have any. I guess we can't get to the top either. Oh, that's it, too bad. Tell you what, you can have a nice dish of hot spaghetti. The spaghetti gave me an idea. I promptly tied the ends together and doused the whole thing in snow. The spaghetti hardened and was as good as the strongest rope, if not better. Lord Douglas, Sherman, and I were the only ones willing to scale the summit with spaghetti, and so while the others watched, we made a final assault. The spaghetti held up, and it wasn't long before the three of us were standing on the top of the Matterhorn. Warmed by the climb, Lord Douglas removed his fur parka and hung it over a scrawny tree. I'll give you three guesses, Sherman, as to what type of tree that is. Pine? No. Oak? No. I give up, Mr. Peabody. What kind of tree is it? <laughs> My boy, that is a Douglas fir.